adjustable. You don't have to go through the trouble of doing adjustable. You could do adjustable by doing the line bore, by doing the, the lead ends, like I said. But you could also just put shelves in there, three-quarter inch shelves, and just nail them through the sides of the cabinet. So if this were, if this were a cabinet side, that cabinet side, well, that cabinet side right there, and you had a fixed shelf, you just nail it like that on both sides. And that's a fixed shelf. And that's no cleats to support it. That's a done deal. It's, that cabinet's done. So whether you do this adjustable or fixed, it doesn't really matter. You're going to have a cabinet in there that's going to have three-quarter sides. <laughs> and you're going to have fixed shelves or adjustable shelves. You choose. And like I said, it just depends on how jazzy you want to get and what's available to you and the tooling that's available to you. And let's say you have no tooling or a minimal of tooling, then you probably want to just build this butt and nail everything and glue it. And do it in MDF. You can paint it out. All right, so you've built the center of the cabinet, which is adjustable or fixed shelf storage at 12 inches deep. Now, really, I, I really like 16 inches deep, but 12 does it. 12 will do it. And the, the beauty of 12, and when you're working with sheet goods, which are uh, 48 by 96, but your MDFs and your melamines are all 49 by 97. Did I talk to you about that? Why they're 49 by 97? They're 49 by 97 because you can't get four 12-inch rips out of a 48-inch sheet because your kerfs are eighth of an inch. So your saw is going to take it an eighth of an inch, and you will not get four 12s out of 48. So that's why we have 49s. You can get four 12s. You can't get two 24s out of a 48 because of your saw curve. You can be... 47 or uh, 23 and 15 sixteenths, but not 24. If you want 24s, that's why we have the um, 49. You can get two 24s. You can get four 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 uh, four twelves. You can also get three 16s. So I always like to work in increments of 12 16s and 24s when it comes to four by eight sheets or 49 by 97s. And the 97 is so you can get two 48s or four 24s. If you see what I'm saying, I think. Okay. So now you've got this established, and you've got this established. And remember that the, 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 um, the opening is bigger. It's all the way up here at 8 feet from 6 8. So it's 16 inches higher beyond this opening. Right? But looking into the opening, at the 6 8 opening and the doors, you've got this 32 inch cab. Now you're going to run some cleat. And the cleat you're going to run, because it's for shelf and pole, is a very specific cleat, and it's called hook strip. Hook strip uh, is... Um, I think it's five eighths. I think it's five eighths by three and a quarter. I think, pretty sure. Five eighths by three and a quarter, and it looks like this. And it actually might be nine sixteenths. And I take it back. I think it's half inch by three and a quarter. But it looks like this. It has a square corner, a radius corner, square corner, and a radius corner. So it's reversible. So when you're using it as a cleat, because you're going to run a cleat in hook strip across the back wall, and if you cross-section that, what that's going to look like is it's going to have square edge, square edge, radius edge, right? So this will actually, that'll be radius, square, radius, square. So that when your shelf goes on it, It'll cover that up. You won't see that radius. You'll have a nice tight square joint there, and then you'll have this nice radius, slightly radius edge there, so a softer edge for the bottom of it. And it's three and a quarter. It's made perfectly to receive right at the bottom, right where the radius starts, a rosette to hold your pole. 
with enough room for your hanger between the bottom of the three-quarter shelf and the top of the pole for your hanger to go in there and drop down so you can hang clothes on. It's, it's, it's designed to do that. And you want to run it all the way, all the way, because that's your best nailing. And even though your shelves, looking down on this, right, you've built this guy at 12 inches deep. And even though your, your shelving is only going to be at, tw at, at 12 inches deep, you're going, to, um, you're going to bring this all the way because you've got the best nailing. And it's going to live up to its name as hook strip because this part here that doesn't have a shelf on it, and this has also got cleat underneath, but this exposed cleat, hook strip, and exposed hook strip, those are for hooks. Those are for clothes hooks that you screw in and that hang clothes, belts, etc. That's why it's called hook strip <clears throat> and, and closets. Okay, so it's going to get hook strip across. It's going to return. It's going to return, right? All the way across the top. And this is going to get a shelf all the way across the top, right across the top, one shelf. Going to go on top of your cabinet, on top of your cleats. Remember, this has got a cleat. This has got a cleat. The cleats die here. You don't need a cleat on your cabinet. It's going to set right on your cabinet. And then you're going to tack that shelf down wherever you need to. And now you're going to start. And, and now you have hook strip. So now you've got a shelf above and you've got a shelf at 80 inches. Now, your shelf and pole for a single hang is only 66. So you're going to come down to 66, and you're going to run a cleat, hook strip. You don't need to run a return on the cabinet because you have nailing on the cabinet. You can screw into it. So, because you're going to drop a shelf, another shelf, at 66, and at 66 you really want to top a pole, but if you get it to top a shelf, top a cleat, bottom cleat, you, you can't go wrong within those uh, fractions of an inch. If you're somewhere around 66, you're going to do great. And if you get confused, I, I never really, um, but let's say 66 top a pole. But then you got to translate that, so let's say 66 to top of cleat. So top a cleat or hook strip, 66 inches. So you've got a shelf and another shelf. You've got a pole. You've got a rosette you put on here and a rosette you put on there with a closet pole. And by the way, there are a variety of pole poles, materials that poles are made out of, but I like steel, chrome over steel, 1 and 5 sixteenths diameter. They make 1 and an eighth diameter. They make 1 and 5 sixteenths diameter. Chrome over steel. It's super stiff. You can span 5 feet with no problem. You don't have to support it. You don't have to mid-span support it. And you certainly in 32 inches, because you've got an 8-foot run here, you certainly in 32 inches don't have to mid-span support it. So you broke your closet up in thirds. You put a third of it as an adjustable shelf or fixed shelf cabinet in the middle. You've You've, you've cleated to hold this top shelf, so if you have a top shelf, you have another shelf, you have room for long hanging stuff, and now you're going to go from 80, which is the top of this guy, right? And you're going to hang a pole, rosette. You don't need a rosette here because you can screw in through the cabinet, right? And you're going to hang a pole at 80 inches, and you're going to come down here at 40, and you're going to run another hook strip. You're going to return it. You won't have to do it here because you can screw in, right? And you're going to put a shelf on that. It's a double shelf and pole, and that's at 40. And this is uh, 40 inches above that. So now you've got the ideal 40 and 80. you got shelf. you got another shelf here. Um, you've got double hanging here. So you've now got eight feet of hanging. You got 32, 32, and 32 of hanging space. You got 32 inches um, times one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven or eight shelves of space. 
um, all at 12 inches deep, so the rips work really good. And you've got a closet simply made that maximizes the heck out of that closet and doesn't cost you a lot of money or your customer a lot of money. This is a, this is a primo um, basis for, um, for, a, for a closet. And you can shrink it, you can expand it, you, could, uh, you can do multiples of it. There's a variety of stuff you can do. But this is my idea of a cool closet layout. So, any questions? Any, any questions at all? <laughs> I didn't think so. Okay, so I think I'm going to call it. I'm going to turn this off. But before I do, um, because you will be clicking on this, this will be uh, embedded, um, uploaded, um, downloaded to the computer, uploaded to YouTube video, and then I'll embed it in the Canvas shell. So you can click on it when you're supposed to, when the class starts, when the synchronous class starts next Thursday at 6 o'clock on the 29th, which I will be on the 29th next Thursday at 6 o'clock. Yeah, I'll probably be done golfing, but... I'll have had a smashing day of golf, and I promise I will be thinking about you. Not a lot, but I will be thinking about all of you at some point or the other. And then uh, you will be at class, and you'll be, able to, uh, you'll be able to see this lecture and see me talking to you as if I were actually here. And uh, you'll be able to take the test, quiz, 12-question quiz, um, find the answers in your book. And then the very next week, that would be the... The fifth, week 11, the fifth, we're going to meet here. So other than, um, is it Jose? Was it Jose? I can't remember. Anyway, writer, Michael Silva, and I think Jose, but I, I, I know I got it written down. Three of you won't be here because you're not in town, but we'll have it set up to Zoom for you so you can see the class. But the rest of us will meet here uh, like I said before, bring masks. If not, I have masks for you. I'll take your temperature before you go in. I'll ask you a couple of questions like, are you sick? And uh, we'll, uh, we'll have a class. We'll have an in-person class. It'll be like, whoo-hoo, it'll be like old days. The old, old days. <laughs> the olden days. And so, wish me bon voyage. Thank you very much. And actually, by the time you see this, yeah, I'll be down there. And by the time I see you again, I'll be back and I'll tell you all about it. And... Good night.